Hi everyone! In this video we'll talk about Sailfish OS, which is the third mobile OS in the world by a number of users. First, some remarks. Everything was installed in accordance with the official instructions, OS version is 4.4. .4. No problems with hardware so far, all the tests in CSD tool my device passes. Uh, CDS stands for Customer Service Diagnostic, this is a system built-in tool. So the system works exactly as intended. I'm not a programmer, I have not configured anything in terminal, but in general I'm able to configure some advanced things with guidance. However, it's important to clarify whether such a smartphone can be given to your wife or parents. Of course, no one expects advanced features like mobile payment support, voice control or wearables. Just uh, basic stuff for the year 2022. I will review the system on this Sony Xperia 10 Revision 2, which was released in early 2019. If you have never heard of it and ask why Sony, well, the reason is the official Selfish OS porting to selected Sony devices, which is called Selfish X. Uh, most notably, the OS license costs uh, 49 euros, and for that price, you get the option to connect a Microsoft Exchange account. You also have a predictive text for keyboard. System updates are available, and uh, most importantly, Android applications. So I bought this device earlier this year, and at the time it was the newest and most powerful device on which Selfish OS could be officially installed. I shelled out uh, roughly 200 dollars, however, technical condition is not perfect, plus apparently we have a damaged fingerprint scanner here. In most cases it works at fifth try, but always after several attempts. Mm, it was the same on Android as I checked before. By the time I make this video, the latest and greatest model is Sony Xperia 10 Revision 3, and as I have seen in reviews of it where it's on Android, mm, its sensor works at first try. In my opinion, this device is very nice, eye-catching. I was specifically looking for the stunning blue one, as this color also harmonizes well with the blue accent of Selfish OS. The aspect ratio is comfortable, the device feels good to hold in hand, and the smartphone itself, being a mid-range model, is fast enough. I mean on Android, but uh, we'll talk about that later. At the same time, of course, there are some disadvantages like this Sony smartphone series has no double tap to wake feature, nor it has 120Hz screen. After having a modern smartphone, pressing the lock button every time to activate the device is no fun. The good news is we have an activation of silent mode working when turning device face down, and this works on Selfish OS 2, a neat feature if you're using it of course. In this video we'll discuss not just the small details and aspects of customization like oh look, control center is customizable here or uh, you can have a shortcut for the pull down gesture on lock screen. On YouTube there are enough superficial reviews videos already so we'll talk about the overall experience and daily use. To start with, there's a real style here. Original, stylish and fresh design, glass effects, dot patterns. The bright and appealing themes, or atmospheres as they are called here, are completely changing the style every time. In fact, in Selfish OS the dark and light themes are present, uh, but the light is slightly artificial, uh, similar to that light theme in Windows 10 that was added in later releases.
original and comfortable enough navigation, although a screen protective film takes away the pleasant tactile sensation of gestures from the edge of the screen. Also, you'd better forget about glass screen protector, as it always covers the edges and the most important gesture of closing apps will be harder to do. Mobile data in SelfieOS activated on your device without any additional setup. Yes, for Sony smartphones this can be a problem. It is in some countries, I guess, that you have to type the word Internet in the APN, which is uh, access point name settings, so that cellular connections start working. Surprisingly, it is somehow set correctly in SelfieOS right away. Call recording out of the box. It's great that this was implemented. If it's illegal in your country, just don't use it and don't prevent others from using this super useful feature. Incorporate features such as multi-user mode and guest mode, plus VPN support and built-in scanner of QR codes in camera As it been said, VPN must be configured manually, as uh, you can't manage it using an Android app and there's no native apps for that. That's a drawback, because even a simplified setup using OpenVPN configuration file is not that easy for most users. And here there are also some annoying bugs. You can back up data to a cloud, However, this is not like backing up Android device, let alone iOS backups, since most data is not transferred, such as photos and videos, passwords, music and, most importantly, apps. Uh, not even the list of them, like on Yola's support article is stated. You can choose SD card backup to have photos and videos transferred, but then automatic backups won't be available. So, text and clipboard. The strong side is concept here. Zoom and focus on cursor, automatic copying. This is something that should be on iOS, like this simple gesture to close the keyboard, and this method works always, not from case to case. Encrypted Linux, a password at a boot. Since SelfishOS version 4, there's an app sandboxing, app permissions, and basically Yola added some of those modern privacy features that iOS and Android already have. Terminal visibility to install Linux programs, if allow untrusted software enabled. Uh, plus a clear file system for Linux users, not that mess which is on Android. If you've always wanted to install a server with ease, you'll be happy here. As I said, the Linux part I'm not particularly interested in, but it's an advantage worth mentioning. Finally, 
support for Android applications is top notch, unlike the already discontinued BlackBerry OS and Windows Phone, and the latter had almost got Android app support, the Android virtual machine is not used here. From day one, the core of Selfish OS has APIs of Android open source project, which makes most apps run stably and don't drain the battery too much. Right, not all applications and not all features. So, for example, they won't support fingerprint scanner, plus apps that use Google Play services won't work either. Take this into account, because very often some shitty apps which everyone uses utilize Google Play services for authentication. I'm from Ukraine, and for those aware, Viber and OLX will be troublemakers, as always. If you have no idea, it's just some local shitty apps that everyone hates, and of course they won't work given half a chance. But there's a solution. You can find some apps in Huawei App Gallery, for which these disaster developers are forced to remove Google Play services parts from their apps. So you can just install another app store, sign up, and that's it. Of course, they won't have most of animations and will run slower than on your old Android phone, but they will work. However, don't forget about the overall OS low performance. Even in the simplest games and applications you'll see low FPS. I'll tell more about this in a minute. Just look at these frame drops even in a simple game like that. It is clear that in more complex games and applications it gets even worse. But they do work, as a Sony Xperia 10 Revision 2 supports applications as if it was an Android 10 device. Any scrolling is extremely bad. Forget the usual 16Gz scrolling, you're back to 2009. Probably the reason is the outdated core code base. The browser performance, PDF rendering, view in Microsoft Word document, low FPS is everywhere, even on the main page menu. In this regard, it's easier to say what is not laggy, like the app grid, control center, the closing animation, just what most people on YouTube show. You can grab your old Android smartphone right now, if you have one, to compare it. And while some say that all this is magically not noticeable on Sony Xperia 10 Revision 3, which is at most two times faster in some tasks, I don't really believe in it. Perhaps there's no smartphone on the planet that could actually run smoothly on Selfish OS. 
Besides, the flaws of outdated code should not be compensated by powerful devices. I highly doubt the smoothness could really appear anytime soon, because on my Sony Xperia 10 Revision 2, scrolling pages in the full browser is super laggy, like we're talking not about frame drops, rather it's a continuous slideshow on the majority of websites. Even in native apps you feel the slowness everywhere, in every API, in every UI element. Unfortunately, if you are not talking about a built-in system in a car or smart fridge, whatever, but a smartphone for daily use, it's unacceptable. And for this project to be even in theory viable on smartphones, the performance has to be drastically improved. Although it may be just impossible, I realize that the main asset of Yola, which is essentially a startup, is a code that the former Nokia developers have taken with them as the Maimo and Miko OS groundwork. But it's not 2009 anymore, unfortunately, and it seems that the use of deprecated code has limits. This is as I see it, maybe selfish OS is using really deprecated code that just can't work smoothly. You can download native for Android apps from unofficial stores, such as Aurora Store, which gives anonymous access to Google Play without Google Play services. Since 2014, a small but active community has created a plethora of native apps. But when it comes to this device, there are few native apps available. The reason is the 64-bit architecture of this device and the so-called cell gel, which is sandboxing. So, for more or less modern smartphones like Sony Xperia 10, Revisions 2 or Freezers, are very few apps from the community. Moreover, the code base changes so much from OS version to version, even with minor updates that many apps with old versions and uh, no support stop working. And because of this, there are almost no apps for this device and you are in the Yola store. The virtual solution is non-official community store Storeman, where people publish their test or half-baked apps, and that's something. A few of them you can even use daily. Unfortunately, even in Storeman, a lot is not available because of 64-bit incompatibility, sandboxing, or simply because a minor selfish OS update breaks things, and developers have to constantly refine their apps, which often were created overnight out of sheer enthusiasm. The problem here is that official YOLO store doesn't offer an option to buy apps, which is serious, as it ultimately discourages enthusiastic developers. You won't find extensions for the stock browser in Storeman either, because the browser doesn't support them, and that's a disaster. And while there used to be third-party apps and other solutions to block ads in the browser, even if they were primitive, such as blocking by hosts, currently they don't work. Like sharing multiple photos or free image cropping or browser extensions such as Adblock. Obviously for such a big project and a small team it's hard to implement all the essentials at once, but there are some obvious gaps. In addition to galleries, there are plenty of features missed in documents. See, we are not talking about something advanced like multi-window mode or picture-in-picture, -picture, although we have this strange but perhaps very important gesture. At the same time, there is no opening you tap in the background, no dot after double space or at least a simple way to disable keyboard suggestions. There is also no control over music playback in the background. Control Sender doesn't provide that, so you can control music either in a minimized window or using the headphones buttons. The world's third leading mobile OS, of course, has a million other small UI issues and lacking functions, which can annoy you. In particular, the volume is adjusted with buttons in steps of 20% and you can't adjust volume on the screen. Because of this, for example, the minimum volume may be still not quite enough. In addition, it's impossible to adjust the ringer volume separately from the media volume, like on iPhone. 
or for example out of the box you won't find a setting to change the volume of an alarm clock. If you're an iPhone user you know this pain. But some annoying shortcomings can be solved with community patches. There's even a user interface to manage them via Patch Manager, the project you can install from Stormen. But again, most patches won't work. Why? Because 64-bit architecture. New OS version, sandboxing, so bingo, I was able to install the patch that fixes the volume slider. But most of the useful patches are not available for this device and newer. Text and clipboard, but now the weak part. No quick selection of all text, especially annoying in the browser search box. No cut, no double tap, although Android tabs have it all, as well as a way to quickly select all text. Some serious problems with GPS on Sony XA2, Xperia 10 Revision 2 and others, with Mozilla services getting in the way more than helping. I personally experienced this for long, then I installed MLS Manager, GPS Info, did something vague you, and GPS seems to work now. But this is a serious problem in the camp of the world's third leading mobile OS. Some say that GPS works fine on Sony Xperia 10 Revision 3. But again, with many Sony devices, people have been complaining about this problem for years, so it would not be surprising if you encounter this problem too. The simplest possible algorithms by camera app, although the Sony optics mitigates this. The biggest downside is apps and HDR, also buttons for switching optical zoom for reason for a while on this model. At the time of creating video for Xperia 10 Revision 3, the switches are not there yet, as Google has once again rewritten the camera component on Android, and the Finns need to make enormous efforts to make everything work even on one new device. So you can get HDR with advanced camera app, but the app itself is half-baked. There's problems with video recording, it doesn't say photo resolution settings, resetting them every time, etc, etc. can't say this is a strong point of the OS, because many people complain and even on my Sony, on which the battery health is good, I see an obvious difference compared to Android on this very device. It might be not because Android apps are used, although you mainly will use them here, maybe just the specifics of Selfish OS. In standby mode, it sometimes drains 30% per day. Even in power saving mode, the most likely culprit is a background process such as Android app support, which can be disabled though. In general, Selfish OS has enough bugs related to background processes, so Yola recommends restarting a smartphone occasionally. And finally, the default browser, the most important app of any smartphone. So here is where all shortcomings of the OS are best seen. Starting from extremely slow tap reaction, problematic text selection, 
and ending with the lack of ad blocking. Of course, it's very difficult to keep a browser up to date with a small team, even taking into account that standard Mozilla engine is under the hood. And we should acknowledge the built-in browser opening most websites with ease, even though some unfortunately can be open in desktop version only. But the problem is neither the speed at which you can do the basic actions, nor the lack of search suggestions in the search bar, and not even this little X button that is the only way to close a tab. These are child's play, but if you look at this terrible scrolling FPS and this level of responsiveness, you just wouldn't want to use it. And in the eyes of most people, it's a verdict. Despite all the drawbacks, Selfish OS is functional and usable, unlike any other alternatives to Android and iOS, which are either long abandoned from Windows Phone and BlackBerry OS to Ubuntu Touch, or like Pure OS, Post Market OS, Mobian, and other bizarre no names, are more like half baked alpha versions of mobile Linux distros rather than something ready to use, especially in corporate sector. Therefore, the overall advantage is the relevance of the world's third leading mobile OS, including even support from Yola. Of course, at the moment this project doesn't really look like something that could be called a smartphone for an end user, rather it's a proof of concept for a system which in the future might become something more than a toy for Russian, Chinese or any other authoritarian governments. At the same time, it's the best mobile Linux available. Would it be possible to use Selfish OS if Android and iOS suddenly disappeared? Well, the answer is yes, anyone can use Selfish OS, and that's the upside. Is it enjoyable to use, even compared to a budget smartphone from 2014? And here's the answer. Just look at this gorgeous Nokia ZX software platform and a little-known smartphone called Nokia X2, which was shipped by the company with some sort of Android on it in 2014. See the difference? Anyway, now, who could be interested in installing Selfish OS, or more accurately, Selfish X, Yola's community program for selected Sony devices? We won't talk about enthusiasts or those who are tired of iOS and Android apps. That's childish and there are very few of them. From my point of view, Selfish OS can appeal to two types of people. First, pro Linux users or others who, for whatever reason, have always wanted a Linux smartphone. You can find a device for $150 or even less, while Sony Xperia 10 Revision 3 is much more appealing than yet another crowdfunded Linux phone with all we know what specs. And second, people who radically don't want to use something from big and scary corporations. Uh, there are nuances here, though, because Yola has never focused on such users. Perhaps they should have. And Selfish OS can't boast of super advanced privacy features like those notification dots on iOS when camera or microphone is used. So, for instance, 
app permissions can't be revoked once an app is allowed to do something. However, it's, this is not Google or Apple, so let it be. Well, yes, there's a small community of Nokia N9 fans who may like to flash their legendary devices, but there are not so many of them, so let's consider we have two groups. All in all, I don't see how Selfish OS in this state could be used on someone's main device, perhaps only on a second one. However, it's nice to have exactly the Linux alternative the world needs, which someone may even find useful, and Selfish OS definitely has a future. Even if not with smartphones.